Well, let's take a look at this mortgage. <clears throat> and uh, the parties uh, to the mortgage are the mortgagor and the mortgagee. Again, if it ends in OR, it's the one that gives. If it ends in double E, it's the one that receives. And the mortgagor is the buyer. It's a grantee. Mortgagee is the lender. It's the bank. Now, the buyer is going to make a, a loan, is going to ask for a loan of money to purchase a property. And in exchange for the loan that they're going to get, the mortgagor, the buyer, has to give two documents. They have to give what's called a promissory note and the mortgage. Okay? So most people uh, get confused. They say, well, I'm going to go to uh, the bank and get a mortgage. No, you're not going to get a mortgage. You're going to get a loan. Now, what you're going to give in exchange for that loan, you're going to sign these two documents, which is called the promissory note and the mortgage. <clears throat> okay? So again, the promissory note is the document. It's a document that's going to, it's a document of indebtedness, that you're uh, borrowing money from the bank, and you're making a promise. That's why they call it a promissory note, and it's also referred to as the note. Okay, so you're making a promise to pay, let's say you borrowed $400,000 at 6% interest rate for the next 30 years, for the next maturity date, okay, of 30 years. So that's called a promissory note. It's just a very simple document indicating that you've made a, a, uh, an indebtedness, that you are now indebted to the bank. Uh, for a certain amount of money for a certain period of time. Okay, so it's called a promissory note. The other document is called a mortgage. Okay, and the mortgage is the document that says that if you don't pay on time and if you don't keep your promises, then we will take your house away. So this document, the mortgage, is the security instrument, the collateral of the bank. This is called the security instrument of the bank. Okay, again, the lender is the mortgagee. And the borrower is the mortgagor. Okay, but again, the, uh, to make it very clear, it is this, with this document that they can take your house away. So if you don't meet your obligations, if you're in breach, if you're in violation, okay, the mortgage is the document that takes your property away and they can foreclose on you. And uh, that's what we're seeing in the industry that's happening right now. Okay, out of these two uh, documents, <clears throat> The mortgage is the document that's going to get recorded, and the purpose of recording that is to create a constructive notice. Constructive notice. The promissory note does not get uh, recorded. The mortgage gets recorded. Okay, so again, the mortgagor, in exchange for the money they receive, they're going to give the promissory note of the mortgage and that's why they're also known as the note giver so the buyer uh, the homeowner now is going to be known as the note giver because they're going to give that note they're going to sign it and they're going to give it to the bank and the mortgagee is the lender it's the bank and they're going to be known as the note holder so throughout the contracts you're going to be looking at you're going to be looking at the note giver the note holder okay so again the bank is the note holder okay don't forget that the promissory note is signed by the mortgagor, by the borrower, okay? And the mortgage is going to be recorded, which provides constructive notice. And number two, the mortgage is the security instrument of the bank. It's the collateral. And also, this mortgage is a voluntary lien, voluntary lien. And it's signed by the mortgagor, by the borrower. And it is number five, this document, which facilitates the foreclosure. It is the mortgage which is going to facilitate the, mor the, the foreclosure process and which they're going to accelerate the payment and take your home away from you. Okay, so we're going to understand in order for us to understand the foreclosure proceedings, we have to understand the power of the mortgage document. <clears throat> now, any loan is going to get amortized. So we have uh, the word mortgage and the word amortization. Now, the word mort uh, from Latin uh, comes from the Latin terminology of death, of killing, okay? The same thing with mort, amortization, okay? So with every payment we're making, we're killing, we're extinguishing uh, this debt obligation. So in this example, if we get a principal and interest payment, a P&I payment, the debt service of $2,000, then with every payment that we make for the next 30 years, for the next 360 months, we're going to positive amortization. We're going to positively kill that, eliminate that debt. So this is called fully amortized loan. So it could be a fixed rate mortgage payment that we're doing of $2,000. And each payment 
for the next 30 uh, years, for the next 360 months, it's sufficient to kill off that debt. And number two, we have a, a principal and interest, a P&I payment, but it's partially amortized. Now, instead of paying $2,000, we are only paying $1,000, and this payment is not enough to kill off this debt. So we're going to have negative amortization, and we're going to have a balloon. <clears throat> negative amortization. Number three, we have an interest only payment, which is called term mortgage, term mortgage. And in this particular case, we're only paying, uh, in this example, we're only paying $1,000 of interest. Therefore, we're going to have a balloon of principal at the end. So here, we also have negative amortization. Okay, so these are the three ways you're going to be able to see uh, the amortization process. Uh, it's either fully amortized, partially amortized, or term mortgage.